Create and execute Windows command files, integer input function. This function, get integer, prompts the user for integers, then error checks and accepts inputs. Decimal, octal, and hexadecimal inputs are allowed. The functions will be used in the file management program that will be described in a later video. Many useful code sections or snippets are described in these videos and those will be collected in a video, How Do I, in this same playlist. You are watching a Tom's Tech Notes video. If you like this video, please wait until you are finished watching it, then click my name, Thomas Wallace, to visit my channel page. A welcome video will play to describe my other videos. You can copy the function and its test driver described in this video from my website. Click the script web page link below this video or type this address into your browser's address box. Copy the test file code into a .bat file with any name. Save the get integer function in file get underscore integer .bat. Both files must be in the same folder or both on the desktop. As I did for the get string function in a previous video, I'll describe this function using its test driver. The function get integer prompts the user for entering an integer value and then checks it against specified limits, returns the value when a valid value has been entered. The parameters for the function call are the value returned that from the user's entry. And I should mention here that the parameters for the minimum and maximum and the user's entry can all be specified as decimal, octal, or hexadecimal numbers. Octal numbers are assumed when the first digit is a zero. Hexadecimal numbers begin with 0x. The prompt to provide the user before he enters his value. The default value to be returned by getIntegr if the user just presses return when he's prompted for an input. The check range variable, yes or no, tells the function whether or not to do a range check on the entered number. Min gives the minimum value allowed, max gives the maximum value allowed, and show range tells the function whether or not to display the range before the prompt. We described in great detail in the get string video how the parameters are changed. Basically they're changed the same way with set instructions here or by deleting them from the list or by inserting values in the call instruction enclosed in apostrophes. A better description is given in the getString function video. As in the, the getString function, the getIntegr function checks whether or not the value parameter was omitted. That is an error because then it can't return a value. If that happens, getIntegr will return an error code 99 and the calling program will display this error message saying that error 99 was returned from the called file get integer and that you can press any character to terminate the file and this is a special character that will display the name of the currently ex executing file my test file is called test get underscore integer and that's the value that this shows when run on my system. Whatever value you give the test file, well, that name will be displayed here. And again, if the, if the call is fine, the user enters a valid value, it gets the calling program, the test program here, will display the return value. And if that value was not the default, it'll loop to get another integer value. There is a typo. There should be exclamation points on both sides inside of the quotation marks. And if that value was the default, it will fall out the bottom and close this window. Here is the code for the function. We'll go through it and, and describe how it works, but we'll skip 
code that's already been described in the get string video. First of all, the, the parameters are a little bit different for get integer. In this case, it has a flag to tell the program whether or not to check the range, and then it has a minimum and maximum values for, to check it within, and then it has a parameter that tells get integer whether or not to show the range before the user makes his entry. Same code as in the other function to test whether there's a missing parameter. Works very much the same way. The program defaults are here and I do set defaults for check range to yes. I set the minimum and maximum to 0 and 10 and I set it to show that range before the prompt. As the get string function did, I set the input values that will be used in this function to the parameters corresponding to them so that the code will be more readable. I set the output value that will be used to p in front of the name of the parameter, p prompt, p default. These are, remember, these are defaults parameters for the program. We're not up to the stuff for the actual user input value yet. So the default gets set to d default and that gets set to none. So even though it's asking for an integer input, the default returned if the user doesn't make an input is the string n-o-n-e. And that is one of the parameters that you can set when you call this function. Check range again. These are all the defaults. This is the same kind of code used in the other function. I set the working copies of the parameters to the default values. Then I call this function check no entry, which is exactly the same function described in get string, to determine whether or not the caller, now not the user, the programmer, the caller, the calling program, whether or not to determine whether or not the calling program has changed those parameters. If so, this function will change the value that we will use for that parameter when we process the user input. After we've got all the parameters set to their updated values, we go ahead and we prompt the user for input and check whether that input satisfies the criteria requested by the caller. As, as we had to do for get string, we have to initialize the value returned from the prompt command to some valid value, and in this case we set it to the default. Then we de determine whether or not we're supposed to show the range. If we are, we show the range, the minimum and maximum. Then we prompt the user with the special set slash p command for the input value, and we put the prompt string in front of that prompt character, just like we did in get string. Same code, we remove illegal characters, go down and check the value, and if it was empty, we set it to the default. So now we go down and we check the value. If he did enter the default, we'll just accept it and return it. Verify that it's a number. This code's a little tricky. I did it by trial and error and a lot of Googling and finally came up with something that'll tell me whether or not the, the input value has any letters in it, either before or after the number. The way this code now works, it will work whether the user enters decimal, octal, or hexadecimal numbers. and Octal numbers, the first digit is a zero. Hexadecimal numbers, the first two characters must be zero X. And we'll show you some tests that those all work. And as I mentioned, the minimum and maximum values set by the caller can also be set to octal or hexadecimal numbers or decimal numbers. There's some debug code I left in here. That, again, I, I derived this stuff by trial and error until I found a combination that would work. This to greater than null prevents this instruction from displaying a system error message that results when the user has entered an invalid integer. Because I'm going to display my own error message. It's hard to describe what this does. If this isn't a valid number, when you do this set, it's going to wind up with a null value. And that's what this tests for. It goes to bad value and gives the error message and loops back and asks for another input. Then we check did the caller request a range check? If he did, it checks whether or not 
the entered value is less than the minimum or greater than the maximum. If it is, it goes and displays the error message and asks for another input. Here's the code for the bad value and it's, it's a little hard to determine whether or not the value is bad because it's non-numeric or because it's out of range. Either way, I display this message. And we'll see in the tests how that works. Here are the exit commands, and remember it, we described this in, in get string. If your function you're in, which this one is, has delayed expansion, you have to terminate the function this way if you're going to return values. So you have an in local statement, then you have this set instruction that sets parameter 1 to the value entered by the user or the default value, depending on which it is, and then the closing parenthesis, and then terminate the function. So the first parameter in the function call will now contain the output value from the function. Check no entry, I'm not going to describe again. That was described in great detail in get string. I'll run through some tests to demonstrate how the function works. I have set the parameters with the sets instructions in the calling program. And there they are. You can see what they are. I'm using a minimum of 5 and a maximum of 15 so that we can demonstrate what happens when the program defaults are used. And I am displaying the range and I am checking the range. Those are all options. So enter your number and once 5 to 15. Let's try 4. So it tells you the value entered. In fact, it's either not numeric or it's out of the range. And of course it is out of the range. Let's try 17. Same error message. Let's try A5. Same error message. Let's try 5A. Same error message. Let's try an octal number. I apologize to the viewers that don't uh, know the octal system. Uh, the range goes 15. That would be octal 17. That would be the maximum. So we do 0, 1, 7. That's 15 in octal, and it says it's fine, but let's try 16 specified in octal, zero. Remember, decimal uses multiples of 10, and octal uses multiples of 8. Zero, two, zero will be 16 in decimal, and sure enough, it says the number's out of range. I'm not going to bother to demonstrate hexadecimal. I doubt if many of you are familiar with it. Hexadecimal uses multiples of 16, and for 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, they use the letters A, B, C, D, E, F. So let's change some of the uh, user parameters. Let's go back to, I've demonstrated the way a lot of these work in the uh, function get string. So if we take get the check range off, it won't do a range check. If we take show range off, it won't show the range, but that's independent of whether or not it does a check. So I just won't tell the user what the range is. We'll go ahead and check the range. And uh, we'll make the default 50. And again, I'm not going to demonstrate it again, but I could put those change values in here in the call statement itself if I enclose them in quotes. We demonstrated how to do that for the get string video. So now we're not showing the range because I set show range to no. We're still doing a 5 to 15 check. So it'll, re it'll accept a 15, but let's see what happens if I hit return. And when I hit return, it does return the default value of 50. Now let's demonstrate using the defaults built into the function getInteger. Just take them all off the call is the simplest way to do that. So the range is defaulted to 0 to 10. I might have uh, incorrectly said it was 1 to 10. The default range right now in in the get integer function is 0 to 10. So we'll verify that that works. 0, fine. 10, fine. 11, no. Try minus 1. Negative numbers are permitted. So that pretty much demonstrates all the features. I, I have demonstrated how to change the parameters in different ways in the uh, get string video, so there's no reason to show those again. I want to keep this video reasonably short. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate setting the maximum with a octal number. I've gone back to all the values specified up here and I'm going to specify the maximum but I'll specify the maximum in the call statement with 
quotes around it. So that's 20 octal, which is 16 decimal. All the other values are up here. I'll go ahead and show the range. So I'm showing the range, and it does show the range like it was specified. So 0, 20, again, is octal, so it's 16. So let's enter numbers in decimal. First of all, uh, 15 would be accepted, decimal. 16 would be accepted, that's the maximum. And let's try 17. So that demonstrates that it is applying a range of 20 octal, which is 16 decimal, because 17 was out of the range. I'll demonstrate that the program exits when the user doesn't enter anything and just presses enter after the prompt and returns the default. By the way, I had a typo in the earlier part of this video. I was missing the exclamation points around the default so that it would use the variable value. I have a prior execution behind this one on the screen. So notice it's flashing the cursor for the display that's there and I'll hit the return. Notice that the cursor isn't flashing and that's because the other window disappeared and this is an earlier window from an execution of the program. So it did work, it did exit the program when you entered, when you just pressed return and the default was returned. Thanks for watching my video. If you like this video, please click my name, Thomas Wallace, to visit my channel page to watch my other videos.